heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people Welcome to another 3ABN Today program. Thank you for joining us. And Dr. Von Lewis, thank you for joining. Thank you for this having program. me. This is going to be a great program today. I know. I'm excited. And, uh, absolutely. I'm excited. Jesus said, go ye into all the world. Mm -hmm. And while we sometimes think about it, and we should, going overseas and going, you know, to Russia and to all these different countries, which we've 3ABN has done, and, and to New Guinea and the Philippines and, you know, around the world and going to Europe and all these places, sometimes we need to think about home too, right? Absolutely. And there's a, a lot of people around us that need to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ and about His saving power. Yes. And today we have some, some folk that are in ministry, and we're going to talk to these folk and see where they're from. You mm -hmm. excited? I'm excited. I am too. I'm and ready. I, bet I have a feeling you have some questions for I the young do. lady, right? I do. <laughs> okay. All right. We have Andy and Naomi Weaver, right? Mm -hmm. All right. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for inviting Thank us. You. And, and uh, now you all, where are you from? I'm from North Central Ohio. Yep, okay. Central now, if I didn't know any better, I would think they were Amish because I have a little background with the Amish when I was a young kid. Our, my family and my Uncle Olin's, they had a lot of kids and we had a lot of kids. And my grandma and grandpa Shelton, we would go up in northern Indiana in the summer times and we would pick tomatoes. So we lived with the Amish, either in Amish houses and with no running water and electricity. Yeah. And, and Yvonne, we even lived in a barn for a time or two and we'd put cardboard between us to petition oh, off the families. <laughs> and so we know a little bit about Amish lifestyle yeah. and I have some Amish friends now, but you guys almost dress and look like Amish. Uh, yeah. Are we just seeing things or no. are, you, are you just very, you, you dress very conservative? No, we're Amish. We grew up Amish. We grew up like this, okay. very, much, very much like this. We just, um, um, well, we're Seventh-day Adventists now, but I guess we consider ourselves Amish Seventh-day Adventists. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> is is I'm under the impression that the Amish that it's a religion, right? Is it a religion? Is it a, a culture? Like what is it? I believe it started out as a culture, but it, it has definitely become a religion because they will they will shun you if you don't um, hold the culture. And you know, if shunning is, I mean, shunning shouldn't be uh, have anything to do with culture only. So it, yeah, it's, absolutely. Uh, it's obviously a religion by now. Okay, yeah. all right. What do the Amish believe in? What are some of the tenets of the Amish faith? Well, um, they're, they're main, they're, I mean, they, they believe they're Christian. I mean, they believe in Jesus, but they very much believe that it's Jesus plus Amish. If you were, mm -hmm. or Jesus plus however you were brought up. Because if you read in, uh, in 2 Timothy 3, 14, I think, uh, might, might be 3, 16, uh, Paul told, uh, wrote Timothy and he said, that he told him to keep all the keep the things that he was taught from his youth, mm -hmm. and that is their gospel. I mean, that is their oh, okay. Bible. <laughs> okay. That's how they control their people. They say, well, okay. well, this, maybe the seventh day is the Sabbath, but you were not taught like that. And Paul, Paul, teach, Paul teaches that if you were not brought up like that, then <clears throat> you cannot change. Mm. So oh, that's how they. Wow. So that's that is their whole big. Yeah. So if you talk to the Amish, that's what. If you show them truth, that's what that that's going to be their response. Well, you were not brought up like yeah. that, and that's what they're referring to. I was always surprised because um, I, I do some dealings with Amish here. You know, we're in a farming community mm -hmm. in uh, southern Illinois, a lot of country, but I'm surprised how much they really have changed since I was a kid and, in, and lived in northern Indiana, Indiana in the summers, Portland area, Red Key, little areas up there, how much they've changed. While they still seem very, very conservative, we use the term backwards. But, you know, it doesn't mean anything except it's not like where we are. They live like you think 150 years ago That's or right. 200 years ago. I'm surprised that a lot of them use batteries. They, some of them can use uh, uh, I won't say, diesel engines mm. like people that I know. They actually use diesel to run their machines to do leather and all kinds of stuff. Mm. And I say, is that okay? And they say, well, yeah, it's okay. 
And I say, well, do you, I ask them now, they say, we're going to Wisconsin to see our relatives. And I say, oh, in this weather, I, that's probably tough with your horse and buggy, you know. And they say, well, we don't use horse and buggy. <laughs> I say, well, how do you get to there? And they say, well, we rent a car and we have somebody take us. So I give them a hard time now, I do this on purpose, but then we're friends. So I say, well, let's say you can rent a car, but you just can't own one or you can't drive one. Well, yeah. So I say, well, how come? That's just the way it is. Yes. And that's the answer. So it's very interesting. They just say that's the way it is. So it's really deep in tradition. Mm. And we're going to find out a lot about that. But we're going to find out how you guys became Seventh-day Adventists. And the work that you're doing now is most amazing. And so it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a, a fun time, a learning time. And realize that we have people right here in our communities all around us. Not only those who are Amish, but people who don't know the Lord that we should be witnessing to. But different people have different gifts. They're in different situations right. where you can minister to other people, maybe better than someone else. That's right. So that's your gift. Right now, speaking of gifts, we have Pastor C.A. Murray. And Pastor C.A. Murray has many gifts. He not only preaches, but he sings. And so he's going to be singing for us right now. Faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence. I need no other it is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus says this ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will not cast me out. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for The great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I need no other evidence, I need no other that Jesus died and rose again for me. My soul is resting on his word, the living word of God.
Amen. Thank you, Pastor C.A., huh? I, yeah, amen. All right. What a great song, too. Pastor C.A. All right. Well, we're here talking to Andy and Naomi Weaver mm -hmm. and y'all from Ohio, which is known as Amish country. That's right. A lot of Amish folk yes. there in Ohio and uh, Indiana, and I know Southern Illinois, and I guess many places around the country, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you're just joining us, uh, these folk born and raised Amish, someone gave them the message mm -hmm. of the Bible message in the Seventh-day Adventists. We're mm -hmm. going to find out about that. And so you all have become Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Amen. And now you've been exposed to a lot of the preachers and teachers and That's right. now 3ABN. Yep. And on your phone, you can get it now with the app, you know. So we're uh, looking forward to see how all this goes. We want to talk to you about Okay, give us a little bit of your backgrounds. Now, you were born and, and raised Amish, and you were too, right? Yes. Okay, were you from the same areas? Yes, we were not born in the, in the same neighborhood, but okay. both of our parents moved to an Amish community that we ended up being neighbors, and we went to school together. Okay. And there was nothing romantic about it. I had no idea what was going to happen, but after we grew up, we eventually got married, and... Uh, Mm -hmm. My dad was a bishop, and uh, her dad was a deacon in the church. Okay. So in the Amish, do they help pick the wives and husbands, or do they allow the, the Amish young people to pick their own? No, you can, you can choose your own, as long as you stay within the denomination, because there's a lot of different Amish denominations that's just like old order, new order, and so oh, and troopers and so oh. on. So as long as you stay within your circle, you can choose your own pretty much. Now, if you... If you get a really, you find a really bad girl, and then your um, parents might do their very best, best just like <laughs> anybody else would say. Oh, she's, she's terrible, but they won't stop, literally stop you. You, you can't choose. Okay. You're giving us a real glimpse into the Amish lifestyle, mm -hmm. which, you know, which I know our viewers will be really interested in, in sharing and finding out. Um, when you are growing up, is it, you, you're very insular, right? You're very, you, you stay within your own culture for everything. That's right. So there's not much interaction outside mm -hmm. of that culture. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you, you yeah. certainly have your own culture. You have your own little world. You have your own education system. Mm -hmm. You have your own church. You have your own uh, uh, dry goods stores okay. and everything. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that makes it really difficult to break away from it because you are really losing everything. And um, everything's at stake. Although... We did interact with the non-Amish a lot, and just like you know here in the local yeah. Amish. I mean, sure. we interact. I mean, that's basically how the Amish make their living mm -hmm. is to the non-Amish people. How do you feel about, as Amish, someone like me comes into your wood, you do woodworking. I come into your shop and I buy you something. How do you look at me? Do you look at this person because we're not Amish? Obviously, do you say, wow, these people are way out there they don't know the Lord or they should dress and act like us. They should be Amish. How do you, how do you growing up, how do, how do Amish people look at us? There is, there is no one rule. Um, some Amish are very, are very distant from what we know as <clears throat> English people. When I, when I talk about right. English, that means non-Amish. So yeah. some Amish are very uncomfortable with English people. And then some of them are obviously very comfortable with English people and believe that they are going to be in the kingdom. As long as you stay where you were brought up, as Paul told Timothy. Okay. Keep the things that you were told about, um, how it stayed away you were brought up, so, mm -hmm. which is a distortion of the Bible. But they, even the leaders, they don't know. They don't honor. They really think that's what that is saying. Mm -hmm. So basically, they believe if you were brought up English, then you should remain there. You should be a Christian. You should go to church. If you were oh, brought really? up Amish, and then you should stay there. Although they do allow English people to come into the Amish church if they agree to keep all the rules, but that seldom happens, mm -hmm. especially the, among the conservative Amish. Now, among some of the more liberal Amish, where they have less rules and they have a lot more gray areas, and then uh, well, sometimes what happens, you get an English boy that finds an Amish girl at a restaurant that works at a restaurant and he just can't help it. I got to become Amish because <laughs> I want this girl. And that happens. I just met a situation like that here a couple of months ago. Oh, really? I'm like, well, you're going to, you're getting yourself into something. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're getting into. Huh? <laughs> That's right. So now you all have children. Yes, we have uh, seven children. Seven children. Yes. And, and one on the way. Yep. Yep. Um, wow. I, I think, uh, oh, here we go. Look at this. There's pictures of it. Yeah, look at that. The oldest one is? She's Mary, and she's 10 years old. 
10 years old, yeah. wow. Yeah, we have a beautiful family. Nothing like them, huh? No, nothing, nothing like, nothing like them. Uh, yeah, we have seven. Looks like we're going to have eight. Uh, yeah. My grandmother on my mother's side, she had 17 children in less than 18 years. Oh, my. So my. I tell Naomi we're halfway now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easy for him to say. Yeah, right. yeah easy for yeah. him to say. My, yeah. my Aunt Mildred had 12. My grandmother had, I think she birthed 14. Yes. So that, that's quite a few. Wow. And we weren't even Amish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of them. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you, Naomi, what was it like growing up as, as an Amish female? Are the, what role do women play in Amish culture? They help in the house with housework. And they also help some on the farm, depends on if there are enough boys there. If there are plenty of boys, then the women don't help as much. Mm -hmm. But um, they do help other people quite a lot. If, like if my neighbor had a baby, they would come to my mom and ask her for one of her girls to help as mm -hmm. a hired girl. Tell the baby is about, oh, it depends <clears throat> from three to six weeks old. So we did that a lot. I never did as much because I was one of the youngest. And I, I guess the oldest ones would say I was spoiled. I didn't stay <laughs> home more. But yeah, that's just kind of, they help out. And they teach school a lot. Mm -hmm. So the young girls help with raising the children? They, they yeah, even they help, help the neighbors in they raising help the out. children? Yeah. Up until they're 21 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. in the English world, when, when they turn 18, they're kind of on their own. In mm -hmm. our circle, it was 21. So we could, if, like if we had a baby, we could go to an Amish family that had girls and say, can we hire one of your girls? And we can hire a girl for 18 or $20 a week. Mm -hmm. And so it's just... Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So roles are very... Um, defined. Defined. That's, yeah. that's the word I was looking right. for. Thank you. Roles are very defined within the Amish community. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine, uh, this is a, this is, this is a really, uh, probably a provocative question, but divorce is probably very low. No, it's unheard of. No, it, it just really mm -hmm. doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah, it's totally not allowed in the Amish. There's a very fo uh, strong family structure within right. the community, isn't there? That it? doesn't mean that all the, all the marriages are strong. They're not sometimes, but you got to endure it. <laughs> you mm -hmm. promise yeah. and you're enduring it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the most, in some cases what happens, uh, one of the spouses will just leave and not be Amish. And then, of mm -hmm. course, the other one can't. You can't do anything about that. But mm -hmm. she would. But ne never, she would never get remarried. They never go through a divorce case. No, no they would not sign a divorce or anything. No. Period. Okay. Under any circumstances. Wow. wow. That's amazing. It is. So, in in the women, would you say the women have equal rights? Like, are they the church services? They all men. Do the men do all the church services? Do the men make the decisions? as far as the community's concerned as to if we're liberal, if we're conservative, if we're, do women have input in the, you the, know? I would say the men have the yeah. lead on that. Oh, yeah. by far. Okay. By f yeah, by far. Yeah, okay. You'll, you'll never hear an, an Amish w woman preaching. Because <laughs> yeah. they think yeah. that is yeah. pretty far out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She'll be preaching by herself. <laughs> Well, well, they do preach sometimes, yeah. but not in church. <laughs> yeah. Things don't go well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things don't go well. They can preach. Yeah. So, so, the, so the policies and things are, are made by men. Are, are the women and the men, is education stressed within the Amish community? That depends a whole lot on the community. Some communities are, are very much about education, but usually the more conservative Amish cultures, uh, Amish denominations, if you want to call that, um, education is not as much stressed. Uh, not at all, but you know the Amish where we came up. It's not like the it's not like the guys Well, I guess I should let her say that but it's not like some people get the impression Well, the ladies they just have to sit back and shut up and the, the guys the men do everything But it's not really the case. Is that the case? No, no, they, no they we kinda, get our they, chance to. Yeah, they <laughs> the Amish totally believe that you know a woman should you know the, the man is the head of the house He has the final decision and he doesn't always understand that um, you know, there's always guys that will uh, take advantage of that position. Mm -hmm. But they do believe, they do teach that, you know, the lady has sometimes, uh, many times, she has a, a good opinion in it and that it should be, that should be listened to. Okay. All right. That's mm -hmm. great. What do you think? Did that help you? 
It did. Like a little bit. It now, did. You're not ready to become Amish now? <laughs> no. Just, just the dress would get her. There's no way she's going she's gonna to dress that way, right? I, I couldn't see her dressing like that way and probably a lot of our folk around here. Yes. But uh, it's all in what you get used to. Yep. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Yep. And uh, exactly. so, you know, what somebody looks is very good and very, very nice. We used to say our Sunday go meet and close. It all is in the eyes of the beholder. That's right. Right? Now it's Sabbath, go meet and close, but it's yeah. all, in, all in the eyes of the beholder. That's right. Well, we want, want to talk a little bit because since I've had a lot of connections with the Amish over the years, and as far as reaching them with the gospel, they're not usually open That's right. uh, to that. Like I know some who've told me, well, I'm not allowed to read, mm -hmm. you know, uh, anything, I think, but the Bible and the literature that they're put out by their church. So we can't we can't watch anything, of course, on, you know, television. We don't have televisions or radios. And I said, well, what about YouTube? Because I notice sometimes friends will come over and they'll watch YouTube stuff, but they say, well, we can't own it. We don't do it. But I talked to some of them, of course, about the Lord. I was mm -hmm. surprised to find out that I figured that the religion part played a lot bigger role yeah. as far as the Bible goes. But I found out some mm -hmm. of the folk that I know know hardly any scriptures in the no, Bible. Right. And when I, I quoted John three sixteen, to a very wonderful Amish friend of mine, and he just looked at me, I said, of course, you know, John three sixteen. And he said, well, we kind of leave that up to the elders and we go to church. Now, something's very interesting. I don't know if you're aware of this. Most Amish have what you and I might call an accent, though they're born and raised here in America. Mm -hmm. And right. he probably can tell us why because they don't just speak English. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, I mean, our primary language is, our main language is um, Pennsylvania Dutch. Yeah. And then, of course, we, uh, we go to school to learn the English language <clears throat> and also the German language, because our Bibles are the, in the, are the uh, Martin Luther German Bibles. Oh. And the Amish strictly read the German Bibles. Now, they, I say strictly, and there's the more liberals, they will allow you to read uh, like English versions also, especially the King James Version. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so yeah, if you, if you talk to an, Am to an Amish person in English, and you, you notice that his accent is different. And that is because it's not his primary language. I mean, it is kind of a, a bend over from, if you want to say <coughs> it that way, from the Pennsylvania Dutch. So, it's so they're raised speaking Dutch in the house, right? That's right. And in church. That's right. Preaching in Dutch. That's right. Children, German. In German, German, I'm sorry. The, and, and the children learn uh, the language. Dutch. Yes. Yeah. Basically, do it. Yeah, and English comes second. Um, yes, probably yeah. second, and then that that and German kind of comes together because they go they they mm -hmm. yeah English would be first because yeah um, it's in the later grades that they learn the German language for the because okay. of the Bible. So that happens, and I noticed that like on some of these friends, I've told one of them they had several babies and they get older, so mm -hmm. there's a little one, and I said I said that's a cute little girl, and they said mm -hmm. that's a boy. <laughs> I said, but it's wearing a dress. I said, the boy's wearing a dress. And they said, yes, they wear dresses the first year or so. What's, is there a reason behind that? Yes, there is. You know, we, that's very interesting. We were in Battle Creek, Michigan here a few weeks ago, and they were showing uh, when taking us through the Allen White House. Yes. And they said, and they pointed that out. They said, for some reason, back then, they, the little boys wore dresses until they were about two years old. But it's, it's, it's a mystery why. And I said, well, we know why, because we still do it. It's just because it makes it easier to change the diapers and everything. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> but if you know it, the boys, they, the girls wear head coverings, and the boys don't. Oh, so even when they're that little? that's one way you yes. can decide. Yeah, if okay. it's a boy or a girl. And also the boys have their hairs cut and the girls don't. But sometimes if they don't have a lot of hair, then it doesn't really show up. Yeah. 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 So let me ask you, so when you have um, these different, you've mentioned liberal, more liberal um, Amish and more conservative. Does everybody coexist or do you have a liberal sect over here in one state and a, a more conservative? Or, or are you all together in, in one place? The Amish try, for the most part, they try to have, you know, they have a, a one, uh, they call it settlement, one settlement of the, mm -hmm. uh, more liberal, like <clears throat> they might be a new order or, or old order. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Swarton troopers, I mean, if they want to settle in that general area, they will stay away a, a certain amount mm -hmm. of miles. Mm -hmm. And they have like a, a highway that will divide to where. Right. But what happens frequently in the Amish is, 
the church will split because there's just like any other church, there's always conservatives and liberals within every church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, and, and that this happens quite often anymore, is they split and then you have to do you have the two different denominations within the settlement? And in our situation, it's three different denominations. And so you end up with more and more, and you go to what is known as Amish country in Ohio, <clears> you <throat> might have 12 different denominations, many different denominations, but you really can't control that. And usually there's a lot of tension when that, a t tremendous amount of tension. I went through that twice growing up with my dad being a bishop. And um, there's a lot of tension, but that eventually kind of dies down and they, they continue having school. They have their schools together and everything, mm -hmm. but they don't. They wouldn't. You know, they cannot share church like any what goes on in the church or okay. church rules and stuff. Good. What we wanted to ask you, um, we really want to center in on this. You, of course, being born and raised, never changing, you know, tradition, but somehow someone reached you. That's right. If your mind, because a lot of the folk I know, they're not open. Apparently your mind was open. Why something reached you? Tell us somebody came into your shops. You met somebody yeah. in the community that was able to become friends with you, was able to present you with what they feel was Bible truth, and you accepted. Why? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say that I was not open at one time mm -hmm. because I totally believed the Amish religion, I totally believed everything. And I was, I didn't, I, I, and I believed that if you left it, you're gonna be tortured for all eternity. Oh, and so you just yeah. don't dare even think about leaving. Mm. But the one thing that I could, I would have to say about myself is I wanted to do what's right. Okay. I wanted what's right and God knew that. Sure. And uh, I, uh, as a result, I, I, I heard about <coughs> the dark ages and people being martyred for their faith and, and and so I went and I bought myself a book. It's called Martyr, The Martyr's Mirror. It's like kind of like the Fox's mm -hmm. Book of Martyrs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and uh, it just shattered the whole foundation out of under me uh, mm -hmm. as far as being the Amish religion. Really? Why? And because the same arguments they had. Because some of the same arguments that we, the things that we, uh, we told people that left our church, the Catholic Church told the people that left their church. Like we had a controversy over brown shoes. They shouldn't be brown. They got to be black. I found the same argument in the martyr's mirror. Mm. And I found all these same, like we had the big argument, you should not use your everyday language at, in church services. German, German is known in, in the Amish community as a sacred language. Uh, that should be, a, in church services, that should be a different language because it's sacred. Mm. And so that was also going on in the Dark Ages. And those that I had left that we admired had the same argument. They said, no, you should have your everyday language that, so, so people can understand the, um, the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so it just, I just, I couldn't believe it. And I thought, wow, this is, this is, this is bad news. Something, something's wrong. So mm -hmm. my big, I just, I just started talking to my dad, which was the senior bishop of this certain <coughs> denomination. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, we need to really step up to the plate. We need to mm -hmm. make it uh, possible for our young folks to understand the gospel. And I said, we don't even know our young Folks don't even know why Jesus died. They don't, it's mm. just like a fairy tale. Mm. And he was obviously very upset about that. He thought, well, you're just way out there and um, there's no way we can talk in our own um, everyday language that's natural minded. And then the other thing mm. that I saw in, in our culture, we had to confess our, if we, our sins, if you want to call it sins, we're not keeping the church rules. Mm -hmm. We had to confess it to the preachers and the bishop or the lay minister or the deacon, and then they will tell the whole church, and the church, and then, yeah, and then the church would decide whether you're forgiven or not. Oh, but guess wow. what? I came across that <laughs> in the martyr's mirror. Yeah, you did. <laughs> people were very, they were very opposed to that. Uh -huh. And all of this just, I was so confused, it wasn't funny. So I started following a ministry, uh, a Baptist ministry out of Tennessee, and there was a lot more light. I was, I was sure I found the truth. I thought, well, I'm just gonna bring this into uh, into uh, the Amish and just show the Amish more light and we'll, and my big thing was we need to um, reform. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I did not have any intentions to leave the Amish church. I just wanted to bring light in and reform it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but um, the devil was against me, it was quite obvious. Okay. But, Naomi, how about you? How did you feel about him? It's kind of a renegade. I mean, you know, we use that term. He's out there a little bit. I mean, <laughs> did this, your, your family or did you say, you know, uh, hey, hey, um, Andy, we got to, you know, you need to relax. <laughs> um, 
Actually, I think I kind of mentioned that to him. <laughs> Why don't we just kind of slow down and take it easy? I had the impression. <laughs> I thought yeah. she might. I had the impression for sure. <laughs> Whether yeah. she said it or not. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't so much of a reader that he was. And okay. I didn't have the time to read with all the kids. Okay. And but he he read most of the time and kind of told me what he's reading and what it is talking about. Mm -hmm. And it it made sense to me, but I tried to ignore it as far as I could. I okay. I knew this is gonna be a big big problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be a big problem. But you church. I eventually I couldn't do anything <clears throat> except just follow it and accept it and whatever Christ. Okay. Has mm -hmm. Wonderful. So you received the Baptist. You started reading some of their literature. That's right. Then at some point, you must have said, okay, I'm open. The Lord knew that. So who did he send your way? Well, um, he sent a person that moved in our community. He was a Seventh-day Adventist. And the one thing that I was very interested in was the Mark of the Beast. I was mm -hmm. desperate. I want to know what that mark is because I was just beside myself. What if one of my children turns sick and we end up in the hospital and they didn't check this... Uh, um, this computer chip, and she'll be tortured no. for all eternity for it, oh and without our control. And I was, I was, I was a seeker, mm -hmm. and so I, I bought this commentary from this Baptist person on the Book of Revelation because I wanted, I want, wanted to know. And then, as I came to the end of, I went straight to Revelation 13, mm -hmm. and it was a mystery. He didn't know what it was. He believed it was some political, you know, literal figure, and okay. it was. And I thought, wow, uh, I guess that's we just don't know. But then my Adventist friend share literature with me from uh, White Horse Media, which is a little booklet from Steve Wahlberg. Yes. Um, um, which is, it says, I think it's Decoding the Mark, the yes. Peace or okay. something, 666. Right. Yeah. And that little booklet is great. Every Amish family in the world needs that booklet. Okay. Because the Amish are very, they are very worried and concerned about the Mark of the Beast. And okay. the thing with that little booklet, it's not a big book. You can see that you can read it in one setting. Okay. And you know it, whether you like it or not. You just know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's right out of the Bible. Yeah. And so I read that and also um, like a commentary on Daniel and Revelation from Amazing Facts. Mm -hmm. and, and then he gave me a Spirit of Prophecy books of, as well, of course. And I mean, there was no question in my, my mind. Uh, we found the truth. Wow. But we just yeah. kind of drug on for a while and eventually... And who I, was this? How, how did you meet this person? He, uh, he moved in. This person moved in. Uh, a home that uh, an atheist used to live, that I used to work for growing up. Okay. And that's where I got uh, hung up with coffee and all kinds of bad habits. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he moved in and I heard he was vegan. I thought, well, that is strange. And you vegan. can't be vegan and do any work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta have that protein. And yeah. so I met him and I couldn't believe it. He looked so healthy. I was, I was just awesome. What's his name? Phil Haken. His Phil name Haken. was Phil okay. Haken. Okay, all right. Yes. And, so he shared some literature with us, and, and um, after a while, we realized that this is going to cost way too much. We have, I mean, in order to follow this, and we knew for a fact, I mean, who else believes that, that all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness? And that is a big mouthful from Paul. Yeah. From Genesis to Revelation, nobody else believes it. We tried every religion. I mean, we didn't want to be Sabbath as <laughs> Saturday keepers. That's strange. That's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> and we wanted to be Sunday keepers. Yeah. We want to be politically correct. <laughs> but we had no choice. And who else believes that, you know, we should, should go into all the worlds? Everybody. But to, mm -hmm. to, to yeah. teach everybody to observe everything mm -hmm. that Jesus taught us? Nobody. <laughs> and it was, I'm not saying that in an unkind way, but yeah. that was, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, just, it's just a fact. And so, um, eventually, we just took all our books and we burned them. It's like, we can't. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. we can't give, you know, everything's at stake. Our education, yeah. every, our whole mm -hmm. world is at stake. Mm -hmm. And, but we couldn't rest. I mean, we were, we were miserable. And um, eventually, we, eventually, we just uh, um, decided, <laughs> well, one day I was, I was so miserable, I couldn't work. I was in uh -huh. my workshop and I got this... Um, book Great Controversy and I started reading and it was talking about um, um, and this book by the way was mm -hmm. uh, thrown away in the barn and I forgot that it was there and I remembered <laughs> it that day when I needed it and it was all the answers all the questions that I had the answers were right there was like God talking <laughs> to me mm -hmm. and I just made up my mind I'm gonna follow the truth life or death if my wife wants to follow she can follow if not 
I will follow it because I think I think we're hearing somebody come in. I think you got one of the babies here. <laughs> yes, wants one to of the see babies. Mama. I think yes. we should bring Mama. Yeah, bring him over here. See Mama. Oh, that's yep. great. Come over su- here. Let's see Mama. He's supposed to be sleeping, but yeah, yeah that's he- all right. Aww. No, this is family yeah. time. He yes. wants to, there. He's gonna go right over to Mama. Where's my mommy? That's sweet. There you go, buddy. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, John. Yeah, we're there hoping you were. Yeah. See, he stopped crying. Okay. Crying. Yeah. There you go. He well, did. As soon as he saw a, Mama. Yeah. He has an unlim- unlimited amount of energy. It's a good. Th- I said yesterday, it's a good thing we own 54 acres. <laughs> he takes it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of energy. Aww. Absolutely. Well, he woke yeah. up and, and was wanted to see Mama. Yeah. So anyway, we'll go back to to your story. So you burned the other the other literature. You felt like that when you read this, you didn't really want to be a Seventh Day Adventist. No. But you felt you had to be. I, yeah, I wanted I wanted I wanted the truth because I always admired the people in the Bible like Elijah stood <clears> up for. I mean, it was so politically incorrect. It wasn't funny. They just stood up for God, and I I always wanted to be like that. And I knew I found it. And so okay. it just cost so much more than I thought it would. <laughs> and what was your dad's reaction as a bishop? What was his reaction uh, when you told him about the truth wow. that you were seeing? He was very, very much humiliated. And I felt sorry for him because oh. in his position, that was very humiliating. Because yeah. I had a very good relationship with my dad. His name, he's Andy Weaver Sr. and I'm Andy Weaver Jr. Mm-hmm. And we had a good relationship. And yeah, he was very upset about it. But he, he's come a long ways. Well, wow. okay. Mm-hmm. So he's he's more accepting of right. you now as yes. time goes. Yes, okay. we went and saw him this last this uh, a couple of days ago on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. better than we ever thought. It oh, was incredible. Really? Yep. Great. They uh, yeah. they made popcorn for us, but they went and they got coconut oil to make it instead of lard and Oh, really? <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, yeah, really? my dad was so happy to see mm-hmm. me and we were praising God. I mean, it was, good. yeah, because we never thought, we thought we'd lose yeah. our family forever. And, and okay. lard is a big thing because they raise their own, you know, the, the, the pigs and the hogs and ah. they, a lot. And so you, you eat the pork and you eat the, because yep. that's part of it. And, you, and they raise it all. So it's, that's right. and that was neat that they were willing to give the coconut oil. That's right. Instead of the lard for you. Yeah, it was so wonderful. And it's amazing testimony. Mm-hmm. Now your, your burden now, both of you, your burden is to reach other Amish other other folk that's right and you're doing something about it you have a ministry that's right we're so doing we it. want to know what the ministry is it's west salem ministry but we want you to tell us about it and we've got folk at home that i think are going to want to help absolutely Don't you? absolutely so tell us about west salem mission how it started why it started and where it is right now yes well let me just start to say by say that um you know i we were baptized and we became member, members of the seventh day adventist church in August of 2013. And okay. at that time, we felt so defeated. I mean, we, we had gone through so much. Um, we didn't expect anything in life, but except the cross. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, just, I just wanted afterlife and I, I had given up in life. But uh, oh. the Lord was not done with us. Okay. It was quite obvious. And uh, right after that, um, some Adventists started coming and seeing us on Sabbath. And they spent time with us. And we had this one couple came by. He was just converted from uh, the uh, Catholic phase about three years ago mm-hmm. and he was quite well off financially and he said come on we need to we need to do something here and so we kind of looked around and to kind of in, in a nutshell we bought this fireworks property that was um, that I used to work for when I was growing up and okay I never had an idea that we would <laughs> have church services there but <laughs> anyways um, we bought this fireworks mm. property and there was a there was a, a newer um, like an office building on it that's kind of like a ranch, ranch type home. Mm-hmm. And we took a, a wall out and we built a small sanctuary where we could get together in Sappas and at least, you know, try to, try to have a new normal mm-hmm. and reach our people. And one of the things that was such a great relief for us is once we, would, we just, one of the things that made it so hard for us to step out and become Seventh Day Adventists is because we saw, well, we're not going to have horse and buggy anymore. Everything's going to be different. And so finally we realized, Naomi told me one day, she said, you know, we can be Amish and be seventh day Adventist. And I said, yes, I thought, that's right, we could do that. <laughs> and and, and it, then it became a no-brainer. Of course we would do that, you know, to, in order to reach the Amish, in order to honor our parents, why would we um, dishonor our parents to keep the Sabbath? That makes no sense. Mm-hmm. We were, and, part of that was because we were living with my mom at the time. That's right. Mm-hmm. And I could not see to... Just For my part, I couldn't use her like that because I yeah. knew she, sure. she's going to 
I think it's horrible, even okay. more horrible, mm -hmm. if yes. we go out and take it, change clothes and Traffic get car. a car. And okay. Yeah. All right. So anyways, um, then we had this, um, this other Amish man stopped at my house, and he said, you know, I, went, we, I was in church, I'm in the Amish church here lately, and he said, they were saying some stuff about you, Andy. They, and um, he said they were saying, you know, that Andy Weaver says that the true church is going to preach the gospel into all the world, whereas the Amish don't believe in evangelism. Mm -hmm. And I forget there were some other things, and it was gossip. But he's, he was standing there, and he's like, well, I get that. That makes sense. So mm -hmm. uh, they lost his family over gossip. Oh, he came and okay. saw me, and he, he thought, well, the Sabbath makes sense to me, and I'm going to embrace it. So, and his wife was not ready. And so the Amish took his wife and his, his children away, and they ran him out of the house. Oh my and actually God. took him to a counseling center and trying to put him on drugs because they thought he was crazy in his head and stuff. Well, but to drugs, make a is, drugs are something new. They should not use new stuff. Yeah, well, you <laughs> got to remind do, them they're Amish. Yeah, you got to yeah. do what you got to do to keep, get, <laughs> keep people from going crazy. <laughs> and so um, in a nutshell... Well, they thought he was crazy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, she's converted today, and they're taking uh, Bible study, make, taking Bible studies, and they're planning to be baptized. Oh, that's wonderful! Mm. Absolutely, that's incredible. So you have this place, yes, facility, and you're meeting on Sabbath. That's right. Right. Yep. And Who's, we have a school there. We okay. Have. Here we go. All right. Yep. Now, are this these is, some of the folk who come there? Yes, those are. Um, that's my family in the front row. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we can hold about 60 people, but this last Sabbath it was crowded. Uh, yeah. Which most of them are not. We're not Amish, but um, yes. you know the Amish, like you shared earlier, it's very difficult to reach them. Yes. But we know they're going to be reached because yes. they are part of the tribe. I mean, they will yes. be reached. Mm -hmm. And one of the great ways to reach them is is literature through like mail. Yes. That way, okay. and then they're comfortable. Ah. So that's what we're working for. We hope to work with different Adventist ministries okay. um, to uh, you know to get mail. And there's also there's already a. Um, a ministry known as uh, Plain People's Ministry out of North Carolina that you can send all your, if you have Amish friends or neighbors or anybody, you can send your addresses and he will mail them all the Adventist literature, all oh. the doctrines and everything. Oh. He's been doing it for 30 years. Wonderful. But the Amish are, there's, there's a number of Amish that are, that are waking up. They're really starting to consider the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But the devil fights it. I mean, he fights it, I, it really hard. Yeah. But anyways, we, we had about eight children and so we felt that we need to get a school started. So we started a school and we have a widow lady that is teaching school. And she was actually, uh, her husband was a, was a um, evangelist uh, for a, okay. a Bible worker for Amazing Facts for Joe Cruz. Okay. All yes. right. Good. And uh, so she moved in and she's our school teacher and her, her daughter uh, attends the school there. So we have this, uh, we have everything. She lives in this little building. We have church there and we have school there. <laughs> <laughs> multi-purpose. <laughs> it's multi-purpose. It's a multi-purpose. Yes. <laughs> and it's working out, but that's all. I mean, yeah, it's very tough. It's very hard. It's very crowded. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But with, there's other buildings there. Uh, we're working, we're going to start renovation, uh, re renovation on an, another building there that you, was used to make firecrackers. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be our school building. And then uh, we're working on... Uh, um, getting on uh, fundraising to build a multi-purpose building, bigger building where we can have, uh, um, where we can worship and have like cooking classes and all mm -hmm. kind of, because people around there don't know anything about Adventists and you don't want everybody else to tell everybody what they think about Adventists. You want to kind of keep ahead of the game here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Are you finding that there are a lot of people who are seeking truth, that they're really hungering for the truth yes. within that community? Yes, there's a lot of Amish that are hungering for truth, especially younger folks, and it's devastating. The old, the old folks are devastated. They think the young folks are, they believe, mm -hmm. they truly believe it's the great falling away that Paul prophesied about. Mm. Mm. And so it creates a lot of heartache, and, and there's nothing funny about it. I mean, to them, it's yeah. terrible. My, my parents, I mean, my mother, she literally got health problems, I believe, over me leaving the church. Because there's nothing, it's, it's very intense. It's very, I mean, I but feel- But you're able to sit down and talk to them? Um, it was pretty rocky for a while. I just kind of, I, I did once in a great while, but it just once in a great while because it was, yeah. it was pretty intense. But um, you tell her that it doesn't change your love for her. Yes, um, she, and she knows that by now. I mean, yeah. things they have gotten, the Holy Spirit has gotten so. Like, we pray for them all day, every day, and <laughs> during the middle of the night when I wake up, 
for the thing I do, I pray for my parents. Oh, that's oh. great. Because I know they're grieved, and that's, there's nothing funny about that. I mean, yeah. that's terrible. That's very mm-hmm. serious. That's very serious. Yeah. Because they feel as though you, your soul is in jeopardy. That's right. They, they are sure that we're going to be tortured for all eternity, and how could you bear that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but I, from our visit with my parents on, on Thanksgiving, I, I am fairly, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm fairly confident that they're getting to the point where they believe maybe Andy and Naomi are, will not be lost. One thing they like <laughs> is that we believe in the law. Yeah. They, they think they believe in the law, but to them it's more, um, they believe Tradition. in the Amish law. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh-huh. Um, they believe that you should not eat horse because their hooves are not split. You can't eat a horse, it's unclean, but it's all right to eat pork, and you're weird if you don't eat pork, because that's the old <laughs> covenant. And you know, it's a very inconsistent, but you know, if nobody challenges it, nobody, nobody thinks about Questions it. Questions it. That's right. Why? Now everybody's thinking, and it's creating a lot of chaos. Yeah. So we just try to, you know, do everything we can to keep everything quiet and normal, yeah. and because um, we love these people. We know, all I want is them, I want them in the kingdom. I, I'm not looking for them to all swarm to this church and worship. Yeah. I just want them in the kingdom. When we get there. Absolutely. Yes. See, mm-hmm. from my, my perspective from that, this is really remarkable because people don't even know to be open because they're afraid to be open. That's right. Yes. Because I, I don't want to be that person to be, because you're so within this closed community that if you do anything, you're pretty well outcast. So you can't even hardly have thoughts right. of doing anything and your mind's not there. But when you do business, with, with in the English or you do business and somebody comes and you start saying, well, these people aren't so bad, you know, and then they start teaching, uh, uh, you know, the word of God. But how much more effective, uh, you know, is Andy and Naomi yeah. because they still have the Amish lifestyle. And so it's not just the English that's out here, but hey, they're born and raised Amish. Wonder what's after the gossip's over and the shock is over. I think it comes down to, right. well, they're still wonderful people. We see them. They raise in the family. They, mm. they love people. They haven't really changed that much. So what is it that, why did they do what they have done? That's right. And I think it, it will get their minds. Now they have a church and who knows, someone may venture. They start That's right. venturing. have one family already. That's right. Mm-hmm. We've been so, a lot. We've been so much trouble without the Holy Spirit. You know, it, yeah. it's all up to the Holy Spirit. I mean, yes. yeah. But what? But God wants us to, God, God just wants us to be instruments, you know, to get people to think, you mm-hmm. know, get people to question and get, you know, to demonstrate. I mean, <clears throat> that's just part of God's love is to use his sinful people <laughs> yeah. to yeah. work for him. And who better than from within, like, that's right. like Danny yeah. was saying, it, it's, it's a much better witness from within than somebody that's from right. outside saying whatever. You guys have that culture already, and that's you're right. you're maintaining that lifestyle, and in, yet you have reached out to the Word of God, and you really you've really accepted the Word of God, not right. tradition. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they understand that. I actually had an Amish bishop come come and tell me. He's um, he said, you know, Andy, I want you to move move off of this property because I'm in the center of the community of over 300 families. Oh, I want okay. you to move off of this property. I want you to cut your hair. I want you to change your clothes and I want you to move to the West Coast and I want you to take that smile off that face. <laughs> and don't act like, like you're so happy because you're condemned. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, wow, uh, it's working. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, I don't want to be a threat to the Amish community. Yeah. I love the Amish. I don't Brazen. want to be, a th- I want to be a blessing to them. Mm. And, and I, I don't know why God is, how God is going to reach these people, by, but I know for a fact that he will reach these people. And I believe it will be through mailing uh, a it, lot. It, it, the ball will start it, it's rolling. Gonna be, it's going to be through you all, of course. Now, what can we do? Our viewers are watching. You're saying financially you're doing fundraising. What particular, is this for literature so that you can mail literature, money for that? Is it for the, uh, your buildings, for the remodeling, the expanding? What is it our viewers can do? Tell us what the needs are. Well, um, let me first say um, thank everybody that... Um, that uh, contributed to the ministry, even in just prayer. I mean, somebody mm-hmm. has obviously been praying hard because things have been really moving on fast. Yeah. And we have gotten a lot of financial um, gifts, which are very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. And we want to thank you, these people. We greatly appreciate those, uh, mm-hmm. all those um, financial um, helps sure. that we have gotten. And uh, there's one specific church that has um, helped us a whole lot. Uh, the, 
Smith Mountain Lake Seventh Day Adventist Church in Virginia. Okay. They have been such a great blessing. I mean, they help Wonderful. us with, you know, with our things we need for communion. And um, Pastor Danny Puff came up and he preached, and they were at the uh, uh, work bee. And mm -hmm. that church has, uh, they have done so much for us. Well, and we, we want to thank these dollars. Yes. Okay. And what, what can they do? We're going to put up an address a little bit, but so your biggest needs right now are what? Yes, our biggest need right now is some financial help because we, we are out of room um, and we want to build a multi-purpose building for, for, okay. uh, for, our, for the mission to kind of get our feet under us. And then um, we, uh, we're just looking for open doors as far as mm -hmm. who can we work with as far as getting literature to the Amish, you know, start working with the Amish. Um, sure. Because we do, one of the people that is part of our group there is a 30 year, he's been a co-porter for 30 years mm -hmm. and I'm mostly among the Amish. So he know he's, he's got a lot of contacts. Okay. And so we don't know where this is all is, all is going, but we know mm. we, there's no question that God has a ministry for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Amen. Uh, so you need volunteers to disseminate literature or do you, is that what you're saying? I think for the, I think for the most part, what works best is if we can work through somebody, through ministries, or whether we will be that, you know, the center of it. We hope what we can do is we want to reach all the Amish to play in communities. And of course, we want to reach souls. I mean, we're not just after yeah. Amish, anybody, but we're going to be geared toward the plain people. And um, so we want to kind of be there, like the headquarters of <clears> that, you know, to help yeah. other people in other areas. Okay. And, but. But ministries like Steve Wahlberg's and Amazing, Amazing Facts, Facts working how with we can those work kind with of them. Folk. To, you sure, know, because sure. we have over, we have like 15 or 18,000 uh, Amish addresses through Plain People's Ministry. So what, mm -hmm. what one person has, and I forget the name of this ministry, but they were just working on that now. They're, ta they're adopting those, all of those addresses and they're, they're planning to send Steps to Christ to every one of those homes. Oh, wonderful. Oh, so wonderful. that is an example of what we want to do. And, okay. and it's just, it, it's a, it remains a mystery. No, okay. how, how will this all play out? But. Well, well, what we, is going to turn out, it's going to play out good. It's going to be for the good. All things work together for That's good, right? right? To long, them, long, long God as long as we're willing to listen to the yeah. What we'd like to do is we want to put your address up on the screen. So we want you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit what he would have you to do in support of a West Salem mission. If you would like to contact Andy, then you can write to West Salem Mission, 14700 Rickle Road, West Salem, Ohio, 44287. That's West Salem Mission, 14700 R-I-C-K-E-L Road, West Salem, Ohio, 44287. You can call 567-334-1080. That's 567-334-1080. Or you can send an email to westsalemmission at gmail.com. It's all one word, westsalemmission at gmail.com. Wow, what a great program. Our, our time is almost gone. Look at I that know, clock. Oh, I can't believe it. Time goes by so I fast. Know, it does. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking how much courage it takes to step out in faith and to, to witness to people mm -hmm. who would be resistant to it ordinarily, but we praise God for you and your witness. Well, absolutely, yeah. and, and to realize that the per, you, you know, and m for most of us, we accept this, and sometimes our folks or relatives aren't too happy. Right. But in this case, it's like shunning. I mean, exactly. you've done it, 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 and it'd be like for us, if our children went out totally in the world, you're like, oh, these folk are gonna be lost. And here you accepted Jesus, you're accepting the Word of God, mm -hmm. and then you still, you know, people treat you like that. So God has called you for a special purpose yes. for these closing moments of earth's history. Amen. Jesus was hanging on the cross. You all were That's on right. his mind. Amen. And speaking of great peace, great peace have they which <laughs> love thy law and thy mama too. Because look at him <laughs> I know. since he came back. And what's his name? John. Johnny. 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 Okay. Yeah. Johnny, we're glad you made the program too. <laughs> for those of you at home, we're sorry we have to leave you. But until we see you next time, may the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. Amen.